The summit for dialogue and to lower tensions between Catalan parties hasn't got off on the right foot. Three out of the seven parties in the chamber won't turn up to tomorrow's meeting. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. The main party in Parliament, Ciudadans, has said its final no to tomorrow's gathering. This the day it filed a lawsuit against some activists who painted yellow the home of a Spanish judge, keeping leaders in jail. On our show today, we'll show you footage of this and learn how British investments are doing in Catalonia during a key week for the UK. The parties ruling Catalonia and Spain are making efforts for dialogue between each other and with the other groups. But this is far from easy. Far-left pro-independence coup, the People's Party and Ciudadans won't turn up to the all-party summit tomorrow. Less than 24 hours remain for a meeting aimed at bringing together all Catalan political parties, both pro-independence and unionist, to lower tensions and engage in dialogue. The initiative was put forward by Catalan President Kim Torra and the Socialists, Spain's ruling party, have been quite enthusiastic about it. But that is not the case for three of the seven parties who won't be attending, something that alarms the Socialists. Vist des de fora de Catalunya, la imatge que es donarà demà és que aquí hi ha una divisió molt profunda, que és precisament el que impedeix avançar. Ciutadans, the main party refusing to take part in the summit, argues that such debate should take place in Parliament. And that's why its leader has suggested a single-issue plenary session on the country's future. Inés Arrimadas also called for the Catalan president to demand the end to supposed violence from pro-independence groups that favour direct action. Yesterday, some activists painted in yellow the house on the outskirts of Barcelona of the judge in charge of the pro-independence case. Per tant, el senyor Torres, si de veritat vol fer un canvi, si de, ver si de veritat vol rectificar, hauria de sortir públicament a dir que prou violència per part dels CDRs. Ciutadans filed a lawsuit for hate speech against the activists today. Meanwhile, the main pro-independence parties condemned the events, but made it clear that they are an exception in a peaceful political movement. S'ha de posar en el context d'un acte aïllat, reprovable, i insistirem en el que he dit també a Catalunya Ràdio. Escoltim, l'independentisme és cívic i pacífic, i ho hem demostrat sobradament. The Spanish Home Affairs Minister also claimed that the events are a one-off and called for politicians not to be alarmist. The UK and the EU have come to an agreement for Brexit, but this has led to resignations in the British Cabinet. The uncertainties of Brexit, though, haven't affected British investments in Catalonia. This according to a report made by the British Chamber of Commerce in Spain. Some 84 million euros were invested by UK firms in the first half of 2018, 20 more than in the same period last year. During the event, the CEO of a public-funded organization aiming to attract investments and boost exports had his say on a Brexit scenario. Las empresas británicas tienen que estar en el Reino Unido. Lo que puede ser interesante para ellas es tener otro centro o otra actividad en el resto de Europa. Y en este sentido es donde nosotros ofrecemos nuestras posibilidades y potencialidades que tenemos aquí en Cataluña. It's been a very rainy day in Catalonia again. And the severe weather has led to multiple disruptions across the country also again. Flooding near the coast has already caused road traffic problems and public transport issues. Water got in some streets and homes, and some places saw up to 150 millimeters in rainfall. The government already activated its plan for heavy rain. Not getting close to rivers and being outdoors only when there's no alternative are some of the recommendations. And beyond the cloudy skies in Catalonia, a new planet might have been discovered. An international team of astronomers led by Catalans say there is evidence of a so-called super-Earth orbiting around a red dwarf called the Barnard Star. And this not too far from our world, only six light years away from us. In theory, it's further from a habitable zone, but the finding can help us learn how and where planets form. Geniuses such as that of Spanish painter Velázquez are few and far between. 
And now his unrivaled artwork comes to Barcelona's Caixa Forum Museum. Tomorrow, the first large-scale exhibit on Velázquez will open its doors in Barcelona, featuring the Baroque collection from Madrid's Museo del Prado. But masterpieces aren't created in a vacuum, so the exhibit Velázquez and the Golden Age doesn't focus only on the Spanish painter. Instead, it aims to show that reality wasn't as compartmentalized as we like to think. Art was an international language, even back then. Los cuadros traspasaban lo, eh, las fronteras nacionales. Los, los, los artistas viajaban de una corte a, de una corte a otra. El juego de estímulos y el juego de influencias era eh, extraordinariamente variado. In the exhibit, seven great works by the Spanish painter are surrounded by over half a hundred more by artists of his time, including Titian, El Greco, Rubens, and Claude Lorraine. To be found at the Casha Forum in the Catalan capital, it will be open until March. Diego Velázquez was born in Seville and died in Madrid in 1660, and his work paints a picture of the 17th century in King Philip IV's court, a time long gone. But centuries later, this very art would give inspiration to realists, impressionists, surrealists, and surely will continue doing so for generations to come. That's it from us for now. And today we leave you with the music of Rosalia, a new Catalan music sensation in the world of flamenco and beyond. She might hit the headlines tomorrow when the winners for this year's Latin Grammys are unveiled. She's nominated in five categories. <laughs>